Hi everyone, I'm King of the Swamp. I'm happy to be here reading this for Mishi on behalf of some of us hag players. Some of us are named in the video, but many more are not. The original text was a response to a PTB that changed some of the aspects of the hag back in February. As many of the points still stand, I will read that text without much editing. Following that, we want to add a little bit more feedback now that the updates have had a chance to settle. Hello Dead by Daylight developers and DVD community. This post was written as a collaborative effort by Mishi, King of the Swamp, and Mint Lisa, several longtime and passionate hag mains in response to the recent changes to the hag. We want to first thank you so much for creating and maintaining DVD, a game that truly means a lot to us. We're writing this post addressed to you and to the DVD community because we're excited about the upcoming changes to the hag, but are a little worried about what they might mean for her gameplay experience. Any critique raised here is in the interest of improving the experience of playing as and against the hag for everyone. We have been anxiously waiting for the hag to receive some quality of life and balance changes and hope that this PTB would bring some of those into the game. The changes being tested in the PTB mostly seem like steps in a good and healthy direction, but don't address some of the major problems she has, nor the problems that some survivors have with her. In this letter, we want to outline some of the issues that hag players and survivors face and try and find ideas that we hope could solve or alleviate them. We are not game developers, nor do we have access to the data which you may use to make balanced decisions. These suggestions have been included to emphasize the aspects of the hag that we believe are the larger sources of her problems. We also know that changes like these require testing and time. Our goal is to suggest changes that we believe will make the hag easier to learn for new players, more viable within high MMR games, more interactive for survivors of all levels, and streamline some clunky aspects of her power. We recognize that the hag has a reasonable kill rate, but we also know that some games feel unwinnable, and we know just how difficult this killer is to learn. We welcome our losses and enjoy them, almost, as much as our victories, but we want to see skillful play rewarded on both sides, and we want our losses to feel as though we were outplayed or outskilled, rather than limited by mechanical issues. New changes. Increased trap duration by one second. Excellent. Beautiful. We cannot express how many times we have just missed the opportunity to teleport to a trap because we were too far or locked into an animation. This is a seemingly small but impactful and thoughtful change. We love it. It allows hag players to sometimes bring other add-ons instead of the duration ones. Increased teleportation range. As with the first change, this one also moves Hag in a healthier direction, and we welcome it wholeheartedly. Hag often gets criticized for camping a 3-gen or hooks, so giving her better tools to control wider areas of the map incentivizes more interactive and skillful play on both sides. We do wonder if a slight increase even from the new values might be even better, but we can't know until we've played much more with all of the new add-on values. Decreased trap setting time to 0.9 seconds. This change is smaller than it sounds at first. You can think of setting a trap as happening in three distinct phases. Bending down, drawing the trap, and standing up. Drawing a trap takes one second, but the whole process takes two seconds. A reduction of 0.1 seconds represents a 5% increase in the setting speed. This is a very small change, and we'll have to see how it affects gameplay over a very large number of matches, but it does feel like a welcome and noticeable quality of life change. Perhaps if her traps were a little more deadly, a small change like this could go a lot further. Slowed Trap Wiping We think that this is another odd change. We're going to discuss trap wiping at length in a little bit. Decrease trap radius by 0.3 meters and reworking the radius add-ons. What we love about the hag is the tactical skill and game sense required to win games and master this killer. Increasing the lethality of traps in exchange for making them harder to place seems like a very fair and exciting trait. However, this reduction is not quite enough to make traps as lethal as we think they should be, and reducing it further severely limits the versatility and power of the traps to control space. This leads well into our first big issue. 
traps, and counterplay. Predicting and punishing survivor decisions and mistakes is what we feel makes the hag such a rewarding and tactically demanding killer to play a master. Similarly, predicting a hag's trapping strategy and punishing her is a powerful and fun counter to the killer. Last year's changes to flashlights and trap wiping were implemented to provide much needed consistency to the counterplay survivors have against the hag. It offers survivors a new and completely safe way to disarm the hag's traps. In our experience, very few traps are wiped away in this manner, and of those, the overwhelming majority are ones placed near hooks. This doesn't seem to be an action that survivors take in chase, nor is it something that we see survivors do to reclaim an area of the map. This is because survivors have access to many safe and strong counters, such as triggering them from a safe distance, crouching, predicting or seeing the placement of traps, and moving accordingly, triggering them while the hag is too far away, too busy to teleport, and of course, wiping them away. As the hag is a slower killer, who requires plenty of setup time to succeed, this added layer of safe counterplay represents a general weakening of her power. It makes her traps less impactful on the map. In our experience, survivors who want to disarm a trap do so by running into and out of it such that even when the hag is ready to teleport, she can't reach them. They can do this even without knowing the trap is there in the first place with reaction speed alone. It is also worth noting that even running the new green radius reduction add-on does not alleviate this issue. The problem is that this method of counterplay is completely risk-free. Worse yet, experienced survivors know how to manipulate their character model such that they are immune to 100% post-teleportation hits. In order to comply with forum rules about sharing exploits and in hopes to protect other players from this sort of thing, we will not describe this exploit in detail, but have submitted support tickets with much more information. Barring the use of specific perks like coup de grace, combined with the newly reworked radius add-ons, survivors know that the hags simply cannot hit them if they do this. In our experience, survivors who know how to trigger traps safely in this way don't wipe traps. They don't crouch through them. They don't use any of the mechanics that were added specifically to counter the hag's traps. They only do this, and it is extremely frustrating. It can create scenarios in which it is quite literally impossible to down survivors with the hag's power, and instead players must rely on a 110% speed chase. With the introduction of trap wiping as the risk-free counter, we argue that survivors should really have to think twice before bringing the hag to them on purpose. With so many safe options afforded to survivors, many hag players opt to hunker down around a 3-gen or hooks. As such, survivors have a much harder time completing objectives and their matches against the hag are not as fun and interactive as they could be. The heart of the issue. A survivor stepping into a trap against the hag is not as dangerous as we feel it ought to be. This is especially true given that her traps can be wiped away and nullified entirely by survivors. If the hag predicted a survivor's movement, spent time placing a trap, and reacted to that trap activation quickly enough, then we feel that this should result in a hit. Missing that survivor should be the fault of the hag player or due to the use of specific haste perks. Trap placement is at the core of what we believe makes a hag player successful and separates good ones from great ones. The hag's power does not reduce the amount of work or skill that goes into hitting a survivor, it just changes the timing of the same actions. To this end, we would propose that the hag receive a limited increase to her lunge distance or movement speed immediately following a teleport. The goal of this buff would be to cement trap wiping as the risk-free alternative to stepping into a trap and beginning a chase. We would hope that this change does nothing more than allow the hag to consistently hit survivors who step into their traps, provided the hag player reacts quickly enough, and of course, provided that the hag's traps are well placed. This week's PTB included a slight nerf to wiping speed. If wiping is to be the go-to risk-free option, perhaps this change could be reverted, and trap wiping could remain at 3.5 seconds and not at 4. In this way, we would hope that her traps become a little more deadly while also proportionately rewarding counterplay and prediction on both the killer and survivor side of the matchup. Notifications When the hag's traps are triggered, a phantasm is created that follows the survivor's position by rotating. Though this movement is often crucial in determining whether to teleport to a trap and how to best chase the survivor who triggered it, the loud noise notification or entity bubble that is overlaid completely hides the phantasm. In contrast, wiping away a trap does not give the hag any notification that her web is under attack. We propose moving the loud noise notification to disarming the trap. In this way, the hag can make better decisions about triggered traps while also maintaining her web by giving her important information about where survivors are dismantling her traps. Triggering a trap already plays a global cracking sound.
and we think that this is enough for Hag players to notice and react to, and the current loud noise notification seems redundant. We want to add at this point that some forum users did bring this loud noise notification up as an accessibility issue, and we want to be sensitive to that. Surely, there is a middle ground and there is a way for everyone, regardless of accessibility needs, to get the information that they need to best play the hack. We want to thank you again for taking the time to read our post. We really love this game and this killer, and we want to see both sides be as exciting and rewarding as they can be. Not just for us, but for all players. We hope that we laid out the issues clearly, and that you will consider them in your continued development and support of the hack in Dead by Daylight. Thank you so much. The changes to the hag were a step in the right direction, but after some time, their effects are just not as large as we might have hoped. They do help a little bit, but overall do not reduce the hag's reliance on add-ons. A big exception is the egg family of add-ons that increase phantasm uptime. These have been buffed since the PTB, and now they feel very strong and fun without removing counterplay from the survivor side. The new base kit value for phantasm uptime also allows many hag players to opt for other add-ons. We still love these changes. The new trapping speed doesn't feel much faster than before the update, so running those add-ons is important if you want to set traps in chase, or build a web quickly at the start without relying on perks like Corrupt Intervention. The new teleportation ranges do feel okay, but if you want to build webs around more than a small section of the map, the add-ons are still very much required. Reducing the hag's trap radius did not give players an option for deadlier traps that are harder to use. Rather, these add-ons are still more likely to hinder the hag than help her catch survivors. The traps are less likely to be activated by survivors and are not really any more lethal. We would have liked to see some extra upside to these add-ons to compensate for that, maybe like an extended lunge or hindering the survivors. One problematic add-on we missed in our original letter is the Rusty Shackles. Most of us don't use them frequently, so we didn't know of a serious bug that seems to be tied to them. Though we're not exactly sure what causes it, sometimes the traps that are set with this add-on are just activated for no reason, meaning that the hag can immediately teleport to them and also that they're immediately decaying. This is confusing and can easily cost the hag the game, and we hope it gets fixed soon. The issues discussed in our original letter still pose large problems for hag players. If there's one takeaway that we want you to have, it's that we want to see the hag's power balanced for the growing number and strength of counters to it. We want to see trap wiping become the go-to counter to her power, rewarding prediction, area control, game knowledge, and skill on both sides. Thank you.